Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're going to learn about a secret of the crypto cycle and what's coming next. The one thing you need to know that I've never seen anyone talk about. But please, before you start, okay, you go to the, you go to the subscribe and you press all and you stop watching these popular crypto influencers. Don't watch them, man. They've got over a couple of hundred K subs. I promise you, you are not getting any edge at all. I watch them all. It's a waste of time. Let me filter the trash. You stick to high value stuff. I'm going to show you an example of what you're going to miss in the next part of the cycle just to prove to you that you are wasting your time listening to them because they don't care about me and you, man. They just want more views and followers. All right. And you already know, if you go watch any of them, what are they saying? They go, wow, did you see what Tiffany Fong posted? Oh my God, SBF put three spaces in his sub stack and Tiffany liked it. Wow, oh my God, she also retweeted him. They're literally just all they're posting these videos of. What, what could you possibly gather from this? Nothing, you're not gonna learn anything. Wow, did you know Barry Schilbert is going through some troubles? DCG, oh my God. That is the entire space of crypto news. There is no edge here. There's no alpha. Don't waste your time, man. Like, do you want to win and make money and change your life and your family? Do you want to win? Or do you just want to sit here and waste your time? Okay? Because you have to think about the limited time you have to absorb all this information, man. Okay, so you click, click subscribe. So, look what I'm gonna show you, man. <coughs> look, there's no point calling out any of these major YouTube influencer names because not one of them is doing the right thing. Not one, okay? I want you to know something, all right? So, right now, if you go to any major influencer, they are, they're not unique. They are a reflection of the average market expectation. And you gotta know this, right? So it's not that these people are bad or they're good. They're just average. And average people get average gains. They're lazy, right? They're spending most of their time reading articles just to hire an editor and make a video and just get you to watch, man. They're not there to make invest and make money. I am. I've been doing it. They are not there to invest and make money. Some of them just like literally throw in the towel and they go, oh yeah, Bitcoin's going to $400,000. I don't even need to do anything else. They just become Bitcoin maxis. No, you're not going to kill it when Bitcoin's in its fourth cycle, right? Just like you're not going to kill it when the S&P 500 gives you 67%, 6 to 7% per year. You're not going to, okay, you're not going to kill it, man. You're going to hold for 30 years? while some pleb buys Doge again, makes 200X. Let me show you something, okay? Right now, all over crypto media, so all over YouTube plus Twitter, okay? Common crypto beliefs. So all they talk about, all they talk about is layer one coins. This is just one example I'm showing. This is why you follow me, man. Layer one coins. And they're saying how blue chip safe they are. Citing stats such as community numbers, developers, you know, uh, network effect, and of course, history of going up. That's what they say, okay, that's what they say. And you think that is perfectly reasonable, right? And the answer is no, it's not, okay? The answer is, this is the average market consensus. You are not going to make it listening to these guys, all right? And what we're gonna do, me and you, because we're friends, we're gonna go back in time and we're gonna forward test the idea of using the main YouTube and Twitter influencer talking points to see how they performed in the recovery market, okay? That's what I'm gonna do here for you. I, you're not even gonna have to do your own work. I'm doing it here for you. You just gotta watch, right? So, let's go. This is Bitcoin. 
Maybe you've heard of it, the first crypto. And in 2019, there was a recovery wave. Some might use the term echo bubble, but I wouldn't use the term echo bubble because, because, right, in 2017, it was Ethereum led ICO scams. Everybody was forced to buy Ethereum and raise ICO money. So Ethereum went to the moon. Ethereum did what? 4,000 X from the ICO, whatever it was. Huge, yeah? So, <coughs> see, Bitcoin killed it as well. Bitcoin did 100 X from the bear market low. 200 bucks to 20K. However, in this recovery wave, only Bitcoin pumped. Nothing else pumped. The alt slash BTC ratios, the alt BTC ratios all went down. I'm going to show that to you. Only Bitcoin recovered strength. Nothing could catch up. However, however, if you stood here in time, okay, let's go here. We're going to get a cute finger pointing right here. If you stood here in time, and firstly, I'm all in at this point, and everyone's calling me a, a poopy head, and I go, no, I'm not a poopy head. I've just got a peanut brain. They're two completely different things. And I said, all right, I know what you just want. I know what the people want. They want a little peanut here. Okay. So I'm in and I'm saying, look, I don't know anything about crypto, but this just satisfies every single market psychology thing you could ever ask for. Everyone's saying it's going to the moon. Everything's down 90% plus, and now you all quit. And now it's dead. Okay. And I did all the research myself. Bitcoin and everything's gone to the moon. So it satisfied all conditions. And no one believed it. Everyone believed in this hyperwave stuff. And this is the interesting thing. Of the people who were still around, who were still exploring stuff, this is the funny part. What do you think was in their mind? They were thinking about the previous bull market narrative. Okay, let's do this, let's draw this. They were thinking about all the coins, all the narratives that happened here for the old season. They were thinking about XRP. They were thinking about Litecoin. They were thinking about even Ethereum because Ethereum has a use case, ICOs, like people are starting to get excited. They can actually do stuff now. That's what they were thinking about. And what me and you were going to do, we're going to stand here in time again and we are going to pretend that we are listening to all the influencers who are talking about the past and we are going to invest based off their idea and we're going to see how that performed in the 2019 recovery wave. Okay? We're friends. Let's do it. So we're going to go back in time, <clears throat> 2019. Let's start with the unicorn. Let's start with the unicorn, Ave. <coughs> Ave from the bottom did oh my four, five, 545x. That is oh my god. Sorry. This is Ave BTC. Ave against BTC did 545x, right? So from this point, I'm sorry, friends, you actually have to multiply 545 by like a nine. There you go, 4,900x. I actually think it went higher than that. Maybe it actually did almost like a 10,000x. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. 5,000x, okay? But what if you knew Ave was going to be the unicorn, and you're now in 2019. <coughs> you are in 2019, and you are just, you You became my friend, and I said, hey man, there's gonna be a recovery rave. There's actually gonna be a recovery of crypto, and you're like, all right, sweet, I know the future, and Aave's gonna go to the moon. Let me buy Aave right here. All right, so this is, this is gonna be disgusting, what you're about to see, okay? What you're about to see is, this is a log chart, right? It drops, it drops 87%. It drops 87% on your head. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? So that is absolutely disgusting. Right here, it could not rally, just dumped. Dump, 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 dump. And then look what happens here. So as after the recovery, recovery rave, by the way, this, you think, oh sweet, it's coming back. I just want you to know something, all right? This is a spread. This Bitcoin was dumping here. So 
how much confidence do you have? The only way for the spread, right, the Aave BTC price to come back for you is that Bitcoin crashed. <laughs> you think it's easy to be a bull? Do you think it's easy? This is why bulls make money, all right? So this is the first disgusting part. I mean, Bitcoin crashed from like, you know, 10K all the way down to like, it was around December here, 6,400. So isn't that crazy? And then the zombie virus happened, Bitcoin halved again. And then this thing, you know, it still went down, but not as down as much. So look, oh wow, after all this, you finally recover. So you missed the whole move up and down and everything comes out. You miss Bitcoin's pre-halvening run. You miss the corona, uh, sorry, the, the zombie virus. You miss all of that. And it finally comes back to like break even after all that pain, right? So this recovery wave, if you were investing based off, so if you knew what the unicorn was gonna be, it still wasn't even good enough, right? You're basically too early. You're basically too early, right? So let's go look at XRP. XRP, you know what we're gonna first do? I wanna show you the power of XRP, the absolute monstrosity, the absurdity of this pump. XRP in the previous bull market pumped 525X. XRP, the God pump, all right? 525X in a year, in a year. <coughs> so XRP got a lot of believers. Now let's go back in time and imagine you're gonna buy XRP because you're like, okay, the influencers, and there were a lot, they were talking about XRP. Of course they did. Look, it did 525X. When something goes this high, you believe it's going up towards fair value, don't you? Which is a very, very common misconception we have, and we all fall into that trap at the start. We think, yes, it's going up for a reason, right? So go put the XRP BTC chart. Let's see how you performed in 2019 recovery wave. All right, remember, Bitcoin's here. And you already see, you got absolutely murdered 73% against Bitcoin, and then it kept going, and then it kept going, and then the SEC comes and dumps. But forget the SEC. Don't worry about the SEC part. Look what it did here. This is the most important part, because you can't possibly know the SEC part. All right, so here. You still lost 83%. So the influencers have failed you. One influencer came from the future and told you that one coin's gonna be a unicorn. It still was not good enough, okay, are they? Another influencer said to you, hey, XRP's got a big community, it rallied 500X, it's a, like, it's that bee's knees, you gotta get it, you gotta get in right now. For this recovery wave, because Bitcoin and Ethereum's gonna go up, right? Well, you're wrong again. Okay, so there's another one. What about Methereum? What about literally the thing that's gonna flip Bitcoin, right? that is going to successfully do the merge, that's gonna successfully do all this implementation stuff and carry us through the bear market. Imagine you knew Ethereum was gonna carry us through the bear market. <coughs> and you said, oh wow, Ethereum's gonna carry crypto in the, in the 2022 bear market. I wanna own it today. I'm gonna front run all these noobs. And there are a lot of Ethereum-based influencers who started up here. They were writing articles, they were streaking, they were doing everything, right? They are saying, yes, Ethereum got a use case, Vitalik genius, woo! And of course, man, it went from 31 cents to $1,400. It's a, like a 5,000X or 4,500X. Of course, there's believers. Now, if you buy Ethereum in the recovery wave, you get dunked. You get absolutely dunked. You lose 58% while Bitcoin's recovering you get absolutely annihilated. You can't catch up as much, and then Bitcoin comes back, and then you crash, all right? So, and just a friendly reminder, I went all in on Ethereum here and told everyone else to, and I was called a poopy face, and I said, I'm not a poopy face, I'm a peanut brain. There will be another peanut emoji, and I tweeted about it everywhere. I was like, man, wow, this thing is gonna go up, and really no one believes it. I was actually doubting myself so much back then, but I just left it in, because I thought, you know, I've heard about all the okay, famous investors. When everyone's against you, you gotta keep holding, right? So this is what it was like, man. So if, even if you knew the future, you still shouldn't have gotten in. Because why, why? Because all the influencers reflected the average market participant and what their beliefs are. So I gave you, 
We went through three examples where it doesn't matter. None of it mattered. Being in the previous narratives wasn't good enough. And even being too far in the future wasn't good enough. That was just that's the most painful part. So now we don't know. We don't know if this recovery wave comes up and what recovers with it. However, I said at the beginning of this, layer one coins equals probably trap, all right? I'm gonna make this with a red background and there will be a mouse emoji. Okay, so it's probably a trap because every single influencer is talking about it. And they all say with high confidence, oh, BNB, oh, oh Matic, Oh, polka dot. Oh, yeah, these are all great. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They're all such low risk. Darling, you have to get your layer one coins. Every single major influencer talks like this. This means that doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means they reflect the fact that most people who have been exposed to layer one coins have already bought and we have hit near maximum exposure for them. So if there are 50 million people in crypto, the fact these influencers are talking about it, so this is what you gotta learn right now. So let's say let's say there's 50 million people in crypto, right? Um, influencers, influencers main talking points mainly tell you that about 30 to 40 million of them know about it at least. So that's what you want to get at. They already know about it. The market's already priced this in, right? And then also, therefore, most of the people who could buy have already bought because they've been exposed. That's the most important thing you got to get from this video. Once you hear these big influencers talking about something, because they're lazy, and they spend most of their time video editing and they just talk about the main points and they just care about getting more views and getting more ad revenue money, right? While telling you to freaking bag hold Bitcoin and saying, yeah, 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 you're gonna get your 40, 50 X from Bitcoin when you're clearly not, okay? Look at the incentives. You're not gonna get that, man. And you, you are going to get wrecked against altcoin degens, whether you like it or not. <laughs> just like the S&P 500 dudes who got 7% in one year, Tesla goes 10 X. Okay, Tesla, no profit, no nothing goes 10x. So that's gonna happen. You gotta be accepted. So when these people talk about it, that's what they're reflecting. They're reflecting, go, damn, there's no one new left to buy. Unless, of course, you know there's a new wave of 400 million people coming in. But that takes time, man. They only come in after we've shown a Bitcoin's gonna go break the high again or Ethereum, right? New paradigm type stuff. So all those new people, they came in here, okay? And they came in here. That's where the new people come in. So maybe, maybe if they come in again, it's like, you know, Bitcoin's broken up here. That's a long time, man. That's a long time here. Long time. So when you listen to these people, you know, okay, crap, I can't touch any of these previous narrative stuff. They're probably not gonna blow the roof. They might even have topped out and just go sideways, right? So what do you do? Well, I've already given you some formula. You wanna look for stuff that's only been around for one or two cycles, but that's not good enough. And number two, you don't want to get anything <coughs> that the influencers are talking about, right? Don't buy anything they talk about that is a narrative from here. So you want to know, okay? So also, I hate when you watch these influencers, they give you this generic advice like, oh, don't buy the top. Oh, don't sell the bottom. Oh, um, make sure you make money. Oh, don't hurt yourself, but here's a leverage trading link. Like, why are we even watching these people, man? Okay, so... Layer one, this is was 2021 bull market narratives. So I don't want to touch these yet. I think we can touch these later, but I don't want to touch them yet. Okay, so we are going to avoid. Uh, I'm going to avoid. So for one, narratives to avoid. Okay, and there will be a cross here. And there will be, okay, layer one coins. Gaming coins. Metaverse. Doge, Shib, meme. Okay. I have one exception for memes. I like poor pleb as meme because specific reason, because it's a pulse chain narrative bootstrapped by Hex community, right? And Hex did not become a main character theme of 2021. That's a bonus. 
and there's a price catalyst coming, right, for Pulse Chain, for the communion. So that is the only exception to the rule. Everything else, I don't want to touch it. We might touch them in the future, but I don't want to touch them yet, okay? That, this is what the narratives became of in, in there. So layer one coin, so especially, I, I don't care if this hurts you. This might hurt your feelings, I'm telling you now. Especially Cardano, especially BNB, especially Matic, okay? And I don't care if these go up without me, I'm not buying them, all right? Especially those. They became the main narrative coins. They were on Crypto Banter, Altcoin Daily, and BitBoy. The trifecta. Most of the subs and Coin Bureau was talking about their success, right? So, like, you can't get even more popular than that. Cardano became main narrative. BNB became main narrative. Polygon Matic became main narrative, all right? You need to know that. It reached infinite stardom. And yes, as it became main narrative, I was selling the tops as it was happening. So I'm not sitting here saying, oh, guess, guess, guess work. I was like, oh, man. I was hoping, like, oh, man, I hope these coins, I wanted these coins to go another triple the distance. Like, BNB only gave me, like, a 4x versus Bitcoin. I wanted a 10x. But because it hit mainstream already, I'm like, oh, man, that hurts. I've got, I've got to get out. You know, I was actually wrestling with the ID, but I had to just swallow it and rotate it to something else. So you might now ask, what else can we buy? Well, you just got to be careful because... You can't buy 2017 dead narratives either. You can't buy something too old. You can't buy something that was just here. Okay? The only thing you might be able to buy, and I don't know, okay, this is taking a risk. I Maybe DeFi coins. Maybe. Because DeFi is all the way back here. And why I like that is DeFi has been dying for a long time. Whereas, right? Whereas... Look at this. Layer one coins have only been dying for this time. Gaming and metaverse have only been dying for this time. So this is a short time. So short. This is like a medium time. Okay. Medium. And this is long time. Long time. So this is, wow, 2.5 years almost, I think. This is a long time to be dying. So you've rinsed out a lot of weekends. That's what it basically means. Okay. And... Don't just buy any like DeFi coin. I already told you I like I like Chainlink because it's got no competition. That's it. Okay. So be careful with the others. You could probably get away with the Uni. You could probably get away with the Arve, but be careful. That's a third cycle coin. There's a lot of traps, man. There's a lot of traps. So at least you know, man. We've we've learned something today. The stuff to avoid. Now I don't know what's going to be the gems because we're still waiting for this recovery wave. We're going to see a narrative form. Something plays out. Maybe someone's got a new idea for a tech. And then I don't care what happens. We're going to wait until another dip. I don't know where it's, I don't know where the dip's going to be. Maybe it comes up here. Maybe the dip's up here. Maybe it goes up there. Maybe it's sideways. Whatever. The first dip around the halvening or before the halvening or after, basically in like 9 to 15 months from now, right? By the fourth quarter of this year or towards the first quarter of 2024, <coughs> we're just going to see what we're feeling with the market. Can we see a new tech wave? People get excited. Cycle one, something new no one's ever seen before. Right? That doesn't exist yet. We're trying to guess the future. For now, at least we know the traps to avoid. Until next time, friends. Okay.